I'm Kevin Elizabeth, a wedding film photographer based in San Diego, and today I'm going to be talking about how you can make your wedding look more elevated, more fancy, more upscale if you want to on the same budget that you currently have or just barely above your current budget. Before anybody goes crazy on me and says in the comments, why does my wedding have to look fancier? It doesn't. It absolutely does not. This video is for those brides and grooms who want their budget to have a more impact, a greater impact on their wedding photos. So in their photos, their wedding is going to look a lot more grand compared to what they thought it was going to look like on their budget, or it's just going to have more style into it. So there's nothing wrong with not doing this, but there are a lot of couples I see who say, how can we get more? How can we make the most out of our budget? How can we make these things look as good as possible in the photos without spending more money or without spending like too much more money? And so everything I'm going to talk about today is either going to cost you no more money or only a little bit extra money nothing too crazy. First things first, have a great photographer. If you have a bad photographer, no matter how much money you spend on your wedding, it could be a hundred thousand dollars. A bad photographer is not going to make it look very good. They're instantly going to make everything that you put into your wedding look cheaper, look just not as clean and elevated. So great photography is so good to have if you are definitely wanting to make sure that you get the most out of your wedding budget. A great photographer can take a low budget wedding and make it look really nice or as nice as it can possibly look. And then a bad photographer could take that same wedding or even a really expensive wedding and make it look not so great. So photography is going to be the biggest thing. That's all you have after your wedding. So I would say invest in the best possible photographer you can get, whether that's the best person you can get at your current budget, or maybe you need to reallocate funding. If your budget for a photographer is maybe 4,000, but your dream photographer is 4,800, then I would say try to look for ways to shave off $800 off of the rest of your budget. Cut out favors, stop serving alcohol 30 minutes before the end of the evening. Maybe skip out on like, like grandma corsages and little things. There's always so many little things that you can skimp on to have something that's more important for you. Now, the second one is to have a great hair and makeup artist. I have seen hair and makeup artists who are super, super cheap and their work looked really cheap. The bride's hair looked messy and not intentionally messy. There were a bunch of bobby pins showing. Her makeup wasn't blended well. It didn't cover everything. So having a great hair and makeup artist is key. Now the next thing involves the bride and the groom, whoever is wearing an outfit for the wedding day, really have it be perfectly tailored to your body. This is not an issue that I see as much with the brides. Usually their gowns fit them pretty well, but I see so many grooms and groomsmen too have baggy and ill-fitting suits and tuxes. That looks so cheap to me. You could have an extremely expensive suit or tuxedo not be tailored to the groom's body and it will look cheap. It will just look cheap every time. You could have a more low budget suit, but have it perfectly tailored to the groom and it will look like a million bucks. Tailoring is such a big deal and so many men on the wedding day overlook this. I cannot tell you how many times I have photographed bridal parties with groomsmen whose suits don't fit them and it just looks like a baggy mess. It looks so cheap to me, but if they had just had it tailored like with the same exact suit, it would have looked so much more elevated and elegant and it's just something that you do not need to overlook. So please don't overlook this. If you are the groom or if you have a groom, make sure the groom is not skimping out on having it perfectly tailored to his body. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is your ceremony and that is for your flowers specifically. So flowers can be expensive. And I know that there are a lot of you out there who love flowers and want to have as many flowers as you possibly can in your budget. And a great way to do that is to actually deck out your ceremony backdrop and then repurpose it for the reception. So this is something that is something that is going to give you a lot of impact in your photos. So have an arch that looks really high end, but repurpose it for your reception. So it's like all in the same thing and you're saving a lot of money by repurposing. The same goes for any arrangements that are at the front of the aisle or alongside the aisle. Those can be moved by the head table. They can be moved in front of the band stage or the DJ's booth. Like every little thing that you have at the ceremony can hopefully be repurposed. 
Now you're gonna have to arrange this with your florist, make sure that whatever they are doing can be repurposed, but it is something that is really cost effective. You can get the biggest bang for your buck by decking it out and having it in multiple places throughout the day. That's a great way to have more but for the same amount of money. Moving on to your cocktail hour slash reception area, I always find that escort cards, which are the cards that have the guest name and table number on them, whenever they're just placed on a table and they're all flat and all in a row and all on the same surface, that to me, even if they're really pretty escort cards, does not feel very elevated or very interesting to me visually. So one thing you can do that should not cost you any more money is to have varying heights and depths of your escort cards. So maybe on the far side, you have some that are on the table itself and then right next to them and set back a little bit, you have cards that are on top of a little box or a cake stand or some sort of surface, candles in front of that and then back to the ground. Like So you have different heights and different depths and that dimension immediately is going to make that escort display look so much more fancy and grand just because of the depth and dimension alone. Simple tricks that have zero cost associated with them that immediately make a huge difference in your photos. And then if you move into the reception room itself, one thing in my personal opinion, and this is pretty subjective, is that shiny linens don't photograph as upscale as a more like matte cotton or even a velvet linen. So if you have really shiny, silky linens, they don't always read high end, even if they do cost more. Like money does not always buy taste. I've seen some like $500,000 weddings that I thought were really unattractive because they just weren't stylish. Like just because there's money in it doesn't mean it's good taste. Um, and you can have a low budget and make things look really tasteful and really like elegant, but it's just on a smaller scale. So when it comes to these linens, I personally find that a more matte type linen, something that's not reflective, photographs higher end to me. Now in terms of what's on the tables themselves, Place settings are going to be extremely helpful. There is nothing more empty looking than a round table. So rounds, like they have a really long diameter as opposed to long tables, which are shorter across. So you don't need as much to fill up long tables, even though long tables might cost more money to rent. But when it comes to round tables, they're huge. And if you just have one little centerpiece and a few candles in the center and no place settings, that is a lot of dead space that does not look very good in photos. Now you might be thinking, well, Kevin, I can't really spend any money on rentals, so what the heck am I supposed to put on the table? Well, I'm going to guess that your venue probably has plates and silverware and glasses that they're gonna provide guests with. Make sure that they put those on the table. If you are having a buffet, ask them if you can have the plate and the silverware already on the table instead of at the buffet station. And then guests will just take their plate to the buffet station and then bring it right back. Now there might be a slight fee associated with that depending on the venue because it's a little bit more labor intensive to set it out or maybe your planner can set it out with their team. There might be a slight cost, but it's going to be way, way, way cheaper than having specialty rentals put out on the tables. So that's a really good in-between solution. Now when it comes to your head table, if you are wanting specialty rentals but you cannot afford them for all guests, that's totally fine. All you have to do is rent the specialty rentals for your head table and then all the rest of your guests get whatever is provided by the venue. So that is a fantastic way to have your photos look like your wedding is grander than it is. So when the people see that, they're not gonna know that you only had those on the head table. Like they're gonna think that was your full wedding and those are the photos you're going to see and have in your album. So it's gonna look like you're getting the most bang for your buck, even though those place settings aren't at every single table. So those are just two different ideas you can do whether you have plain place settings at the guest table and you do more specialty for your head table or you're just simply having the venue put out all of the place settings that come with your venue rental on the tables already great ways to have your photos make your wedding look more elevated and like it costs more money than you are actually spending on your wedding now going on from that point for decking out your head table you can do this with flowers. So for your flowers, tell your florist that you want your head table, whether it's a sweetheart table or a head table with multiple people like your bridal party, have them put more flowers into the arrangements on your head table 
and tell your photographer to focus their photos on that table for the most part. That doesn't mean they're not gonna shoot the others, it just means that for all their details, their close-up photos, they're mostly gonna take those of your head table. So the end result is all of these photos really making your wedding shine and making your budget look most visually impactful. When it does come to what you are putting on your tables, I always think that there shouldn't be little trinkets like disposable cameras or venue provided table numbers that are not part of your design, that are not supposed to be beautiful elements. I typically will always remove those from the photos and put them right back. Same thing with salt and pepper shakers, but that's something that's more on the photographer to remove. However, I actually told our venue not even to put uh, salt and pepper or sugar packets on our tables whatsoever. I said, don't even put them out. People shouldn't even need them. And if they do, they can request to get salt and pepper. But honestly, I have never noticed a guest using salt and pepper at a wedding. They're just ugly things to have in your photos. Um, it's really rare that a couple has salt and pepper shakers on their photos that are actually cute and part of the design. And if so, I will leave those. But if it's your standard ones, I find those so distracting in photos that that's the only thing I can look at. So your photo is only as beautiful as your weakest link and if your weakest link is something that's not supposed to be part of the design like salt and pepper shakers or disposable camera or a little printout that tells people where they can find the photos online that's like not designed to be a part of the aesthetic of the wedding those are gonna bring down the photos. So I would say to hopefully you have a photographer who will remove those from the photos and then put them right back. They might shoot some with, um, but definitely making sure that they get some without so you have really clean photos is fantastic. Now also you could just tell your venue not to put those or you could have your team put them out after the photos are done. So you have multiple different ways to do things like this. Same goes for heaters if your wedding is outdoors. See if you can have the heaters brought in after the photos are done and that's gonna look a lot cleaner. We did that, I did not want heaters in my detail shots so we brought them in after. Well, we didn't do it, we had the people at the venue do it. But it was nice to not have those in the photos. Now the last thing that I'm going to be talking about is the wedding cake. Some people want a really big wedding cake but don't have the budget or don't want to spend that much money on all those tiers. An option that you do have available to you with most cake artists is having some tiers be dummy tiers, meaning they are styrofoam shaped just like the other tiers and they're covered up in the fondant and they're icing, but nobody knows that there's styrofoam underneath. So you could have like a five, six, seven tier cake if you wanted to, and all but one of those tiers are made of styrofoam. That is going to be more cost effective for you. So a nice solution. You're still gonna have to pay for the design that covers those tiers, but you're not paying for the cake inside. So if you are trying to get a really grand cake, but you don't have the budget for it, that's a fantastic way to kind of meet in the middle with your cake artist and your budget. Honestly, those are pretty much the main things that I take note of that you could do to elevate the look of your wedding without spending any more money or too much more money. And again, this is a video that is not saying you need to do this, but if you are wanting to, then it's a great way to go about it. The last thing I'm going to leave you guys with is the invitations. I had somebody specifically ask me how they could achieve beautiful invitation photos without spending money on calligraphy and all these different elements for their guest. And I thought that this was such a great question. What I'm going to say is that you can have your invitations go out to your guest in whatever plain envelopes you want and then have specialty envelopes or an envelope liner or hand calligraphy on a single envelope just for the photos. And if you are using an actual invitation designer for your invitations for all of your guests, they would probably be happy to throw in one single envelope with hand calligraphy just for the photos. And even if they don't, something like that will probably only cost a few dollars and you only need one for the pictures. You can also get one single envelope liner. So even though these aren't going to your guests, you can still have it for yourself in your photos. So any little elements like that that are just specifically for the invitation photos, usually designers are happy to throw in. Or if you're not working with the designer or they won't throw it in, it's not that hard to find somebody or have a family member do calligraphy on just a few small pieces that is an incredible way to get those really full invitation photos with all this hand done stuff without having to spend that on every single one of your guests hope you guys enjoyed this video if there are any other things that are related to really maximizing the visual impact of your wedding decor but without spending more or too much more money i would be happy to answer them down in the comments below see you guys next time bye